created by Rio Grande. Weapons Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 193 regarding a robbery at the West Coast Theater on Manchester Boulevard. Suspects were seen leaving the scene of the robbery in a packaged sedan. That's all. Close and close. California's leading attorneys advised their clients to follow a certain business practice that would save them money and time and trouble, you would follow that advice too, wouldn't you? If California's leading physicians recommended a specific food for your diet that would give you more energy, tone up your system, make you live longer, why, I'm sure you'd buy it right now. When the leading authorities on gasoline, those who test it the most, buy the most, use the most, overwhelmingly endorse Rio Grande cracked gasoline, why, in all sincerity, don't you use it? More of your cities and counties use Rio Grande cracked gasoline to power their police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and emergency equipment than any other brand. Last year, your law enforcement equipment drove over 55 million miles, powered exclusively by Rio Grande cracked gasoline. A famous sales authority once said, You can make the public buy anything. They buy on feelings, not facts. But Rio Grande sales figures have disproved this statement, for in the face of the advertising claims of many gasolines, the proved facts of police car performance have caused Rio Grande to lead all others with their greatest percentage of sales increase. Be guided by qualified, intelligent advice. Get Rio Grande cracked gasoline from your independent Rio Grande dealer tomorrow and every tomorrow. Inasmuch as the case we are to hear tonight has been taken in the main from confidential files of the police department, we have asked Captain S.J. McCaleb of the robbery detail to prepare a foreword for our program. Captain McCaleb. I have found that crime does pay. <clears throat> crime pays in ruined lives, wrecked homes, sorrowing loved ones, misery and death. Tonight's story is not a story of murder and passion, but by comparison, a simple thing, a robbery. Bookish in form, tonight's story happened actually as you shall hear. Some facts regarding the criminal element of this story will be given you again at the end of the program. This is a story about space floors, a young girl and a xylophone. The story opens in a modest home near Manchester Avenue in Los Angeles. I don't think I'll ever get this right. Oh, let's see now. Madeline, will you stop beating on that pile of kindling and go to bed? But, Mother, I want to practice. Mr. Schultz has promised me a place on next week's vaudeville bill if I can get this season MRI. Darling, you'll drive us crazy with that pinky. You'll have to find someplace else to practice. But where can I go, Mother? Why don't you ask Mr. Schultz if you can practice at the theater? You could work there before the show every day. Mother, that's a grand idea. I can run over to the theater during lunch hour and practice at least half an hour every day. Why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> How is the school orchestra doing oh, here? Oh, well, we have a lot of new instruments now. Lots of the kids got what they needed when the Elks gave the benefit for us last week. That was a mighty nice thing to do. I guess they're pretty fine men. It helped us a lot, too. I wouldn't have had my xylophone paid for if they hadn't helped me. That's true, dear. Your father could Oh, never... Mommy, I didn't mean that. Dad's been awfully good to me, and... I know he wanted to get the xylophone, but he just couldn't. That's why I saved out of my lunch money. I just happened to be lucky when they decided to use the benefit money for the orchestra. Now, I know your father will be glad when we tell him. <laughs> okay, Mom. Well, I have to run along now. Will you get Dad to uh, take my uh, <laughs> kindling pile over to the theater tomorrow? Surely. We'll take it over when he goes to work. Well, 
Good night, Mom. Good night, darling. Sleep tight. <laughs> Madeline, we put you a xylophone that stayed here so it would be safe. You could play to your heart's content, day here, and nobody would bother you. What time does your first show start, Mr. Schultz? Oh, not until 2 o'clock. You get plenty of time. If there's anything you want, just hunt for it. Thanks, Mr. Schultz, but I think I'll be all right. Oh, uh, be sure to cover up the xylophone when you leave. I will. You know, the night porter might set his bucket on it. Oh, I certainly wouldn't want that to happen. Uh, just look at the top of this piano here. You see where that dummy set his bucket down one night? Left it there all night. So I got a white ring on my fine piano. Well, doesn't he put these heavy covers on it? He does now, or I fire them. I'd better be careful, too. Oh, don't you worry, Miss Madeline. <laughs> You'll be all right. You go right ahead with your practicing. All right, Mr. Schultz. to get that open <laughs> in two feet of concrete, too. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, good night, Sam. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, 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 Mrs. Schultz. Now, there you go, starting the night off with sleeping. How many times I got to tell you, Sam? You're hired to watch this, please. Get on your feet and stop snoring all over the house. Yeah, Mrs. Schultz, I just don't snore no more. I don't go sleep. Now. What are you mumbling about, Sam? Oh, nothing at all, Mrs. Schultz. I, I just so tired, that's all. I never saw you when you wasn't tired. Now, put uh, the cover on the piano. Oh, be sure you don't bother Miss Madeline's xylophone. Uh, which, Mr. Schultz? A xylophone. Uh, That's it over there by the switchboard. Uh, uh, oh, but uh, don't bother it. Leave it alone. Leave it covered up. Yeah, Miss Schultz, I ain't gonna bother it none at all. I, oh, boy, I sure is sleeping. Uh, don't let me catch you sleeping around here. Get your sleeping done at home. No, I can't get no sleeping done around my house. Why not? Oh, well, the kids keep me awake all day, and them the old woman are washing If you do a little it. work yourself, your poor wife wouldn't have to work. No, yeah, sir, but I was too tired to work, I is. You better get at it now, though. This place needs cleaning up. Yeah, sir. Well, good night, Mr. Schultz. Yeah. Good night, Sam. <laughs> Scene shifts to a secluded speakeasy in the more squalid section of Sacramento. It is late in the fall of 1925. Two men sit at a table littered with empty glasses and remnants of food. I tell you, there's things that soy. You can open it up by just sitting it on the back with a sledgehammer. Yeah? Say, I worked on one of them things for two weeks and never did get it open. You gotta know how. You gotta know how, pal. You just turn them over, hit them a wall up, and zing them. They fly open. Ever try opening a herring that way? Never saw a herring. What's it like? It's a screw door chest. They usually sink them in concrete. Have to blow them out and haul them away to work on them. I always open them on the job. I'm an expert Peterman, I am. You talk too much, and you drink too much, too. Don't lecture me, pal. I'm a good yegg. I know my business. I'm a big sledge and punchman from New Orleans. You're going to be punched drunk if you fool around these Stockton boys much. Don't have to fool around them. Hey, let's knock over a gun block. Now you're talking sense. I know I am. I know where there's a sweet as little... Don't walk so heavy. You wake up the watchman. 
watchman. You said there wasn't a watchman here. Uh, how did I know? Be quiet. Here, hold his flash. Stand it on a knob. I'm going to swing on it. Go ahead. Now, a little soup on his cotton. Wrap it around a cap. Light the fuse. And wait. Get set. There we are. Seven bucks in that sparkler. We'd better do better here than we did in Stockton last week. Fresno's always a better town for quick money. How are you going to get in this dump? Better not let Dutch hear you call his pool room a dump. Come on, here's a door we can pry open. This joint smells like a saloon. What is that so-called safe? Right here. Hold the light. Here she goes. Now the cotton, the soup, wrap it around a cap, light the fuse, and we're set. Hmm. Help yourself, Mr. Gray. After you, Mr. Becknell. Hmm. One hundred, hundred and ten, eleven... A hundred and eleven dollars and two watches. Some mug probably hawked him to Dutch for beer. <laughs> Won't Dutch his face be red when he can't give him back. Night after night, through the sleepy little towns of California, stalk this marauding pair. Face fast to safe was blown open or stolen. Modesto, Sacramento, Orangeville, and Vesalia paid tribute to these nocturnal yeggs. Then came a period of quiet. Then from Valley Springs came news of another safe blown open. Riverdale, Woodlake, Salida, Cressy, Elk Grove, and Alma reported raids. At last, with a sizable roll in their pockets, Robert Becknell and Edward Gray made their way to Los Angeles. One night in a dive on East First Street. <laughs> Terry, this is Bob Becknell, my pal and them jobs I've been telling you about. This is Terry Gardner, Bob. Hiya, Gardner. Hiya. Eddie tells me you're a pretty smooth working yig. I ain't never seen a box I can't open. No? Well, pal, see, I'll tell you what it's one you can't open. Well, what kind is it? In the West Coast Theater on Manchester. It's a herring. You know, Eddie's been talking about them. What's the matter with them? Well, nothing so far as I can figure out, except that they're buried in concrete. And you usually have to blow out half the boogum to get them out. Well, you figure on taking this joint. Well, me and my brother's been staking the joint now for a couple of weeks, see. We go in and buy the first tickets when the show opens on Saturday and then buy the last ticket on Sunday night. And that way we know about what the dump's doing every weekend. We figure it's about, uh, well, two or three grand. Yeah, that's a nice evening's work. Yeah, that's what we thought. Okay, now look. I got a job planned at 6932 Hollywood Boulevard for tomorrow night. I can't help you on that theater job, but here's the way you do it. You go in there, and when you get everything set, you cover up the box with something to cut the noise the soup will make. You set it off, and it'll blow that box right out of the wall. Then all you got to do is cut it off somewhere and open it any time. Yeah, that's an idea. We can take it up to the cabin in Topanga King. Huh? Don't make no difference where you take it. Just so you get it open. How's about driving me to Hollywood? Okay. We'll go over and pull that shit at Jeff's place, and then I'll pick you up later. Well, it's great. What are you driving? Package seat there. Well, let's start driving. Hey, uh, don't you think you're a little too drunk to be doing a safe job tonight? Yeah. I never saw one of them I couldn't crack. <laughs> Later that night, Officer W.J. Taffy saw the now staggering Becknell go into an alley at the rear of 6932 Hollywood Boulevard. He followed to find Becknell attempting to force open the rear door. Hey, you, come down here. How this crowbar do, copper? Or maybe you'd like a slug from this 38. Oh, yeah? Come on down from there. I think a good sock on the door might help you. Oh. Hey, go easy, pal. I got a bottle of soup on me. Where? In my back pocket. Becknell was arrested and taken to headquarters. 
He readily implicated his companions who had driven him to Hollywood. Meanwhile, even as Beckman was being captured, Terry Gardner and his brother had gone to the West Coast Theater on Manchester Avenue. Throughout the evening, Sam, the porter, had been worrying about the xylophone and Manager Stoulton's warning not to meddle with it. At last, he can stand the suspense no longer. I wonder what's under this here thing Mr. Shoots is so particular about. I want her to take a look at it. My, my, a whole lot of tin and blocks on frame. It's so Oh, it looks like to me. Got a lot of pipes on it, too, there. Hmm. <laughs> Man, is I a musician or is I a musician? You're a dead porter if you don't put your mitts up and keep your mouth shut. Uh, who, who said that? I said it and you'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah sir. I, I'm doing it. What you all want? Where's the safe? Oh, it's right in there in that little cubby hole there. Is this the office? Well, uh, what there is of it, Tiz. All right, now keep still. We won't, we won't get hurt. Okay, Joe, bring that stuff in. Uh, what you all going to do here? None of your business. Now keep quiet. Uh, this is stupid stuff. Hey, who's this bird? He's a porter. Funny, here when I came in. Uh, how'd you all get in here? In the door, of course. How'd you think? Uh, I just all wondered, because... Mr. Schultz, he was the last one out, and I guess he forgot to lock the door there. No, he didn't. We broke it open. And I didn't hear you? Oh, how, how come that? Well, you figure that one up for yourself. Hey, hand me that piano cover. No, sir, I ain't taking no cover off no piano, because Mr. Schultz, he said... Yeah, that and give me that piano cover. Oh, yeah, sir. Yeah, it is. Well, why don't we bump this mug off and get him out of the way? Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea. No, sir. You all ain't going to have to do that. No, I- I'll keep out of the way. Yeah, sir. Well, keep your lip button up, then. Mm. Uh, uh, does you mind if I use the phone a minute? Hey, who do you think you're going to call at this time of night? Uh, I kind of thought maybe if the police knew... Yeah, what are you trying to do, uh, kid us? No, sir. I just saw uh, it. Let me give it to him. To... No, wait a minute. Here. Here, come here, you. Oh, yeah, sir. You hold his blanket up here while I get them mm-hmm. to prop up against it. Mm-hmm. Come on, come on. Get a move on. Uh, I, I don't want to get mixed up in this here robbery, no well, kind of We ain't robbing nobody. Mm-hmm. We're just going to fix old man Schultz's safe. Uh, well, uh, how, how come you all pour that white stuff in the door crack there? Well, that's what we're going to fix it with. Yeah, mm-hmm. Come on, Joe. Help me with this thing here. We'll use it to hold up the cover with. Okay. See, you all better let Miss Madeline's kindling wood machine alone if you know what's yeah, good for that's you. that's just what it'll be in a minute. Kindling wood. Come on, mm-hmm. get let's get this thing over with. All right, boys. Come on, move over. Yeah. Let's get this thing propped up. Oh, Lordy, Miss Madeline's sure going to be sorry about this. What? Yes, Who's Miss Madeline? Oh, well, uh, she's a little girl what owns that there zilly phone, yeah. She done save up her lunch money to buy the thing, too. Uh. Mm. This thing don't belong to Schultz? No, that's, that's just what it does mean, y'all, sir. That belonged to a little high school girl what was going to be in the vaudeville show here Saturday night. Oh, y'all. forget it. Who cares? Well, I do, see. Don't you like it? Ah. Well, I don't see no point in tearing up a kid's uh, xylophone like this. Well, it's done now. Ain't no use standing there griping about it. Let's get this over with. Here, unscrew that light bulb and stick this plug in there. Hey, screw boy, what is this light going on? Uh, it's over there by the switchboard well, there. Cut it off. We don't want to get blown up when I screw the plug uh, in. Here, give me that chair. All set? Yeah, the whole set over here. Okay, get set. Here she goes. Throw that switch. <laughs> Didn't make much noise, did it? <laughs> What'd you expect, an earthquake? Oh, no, sir, but I, I thought I was making more noise than that. All right, sir. come on, give us a hand here. Let's get this box in the car. Oh, ain't you all going to open it up here? So oh, what do you think we are, sap? Yeah, sir. What? Uh, no, no, sir, I mean... No, I just... shut up and help us with it, sir. Uh... Next morning, Captain Katzenberger of the safety jail goes to the theater to investigate the robbery. Ah, now, Sam, calm down, calm down, and try to show me where these men worked last night. Uh, they, they worked all over the place. It looks uh, to me like they worked the place all over. What? Oh. Did any of them touch anything that might show fingerprints? Yeah, sir, they, they unscrewed that light bulb there. That one Fine. Thing. In that case, they had to take the shade off, didn't they? Yes, sir, they took it off all right. Did you uh, touch it, Sam? No, sir. Well, we'll be able to get some prints off that all right. Now, Sam, did you see them touch anything else that might show a print, say, a piece of metal of any kind? Well, sir, they, they, they picked up Miss Madeline's zilly phone contraption over there. That, I see. That stuff, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, here's a perfect print right here in this plate on the end. Get some pictures of that, too. Uh-oh. Here's a nice-looking heel print on the paper in this chair. Huh. Well, Mr. Schultz, looks like there's enough material.
material here to establish an identification. Yeah? I'll check with Barlow. If we've got any of these prints in our files, we'll have your men before you can say Jack Robinson. I hope so. Well, I'll be chasing along now. See you later, Mr. Schultz. Interesting. And, uh, Sam. Yeah, sir. Don't look so scared. It's all over now. No, I ain't scared. That is not now. I'm just so tired, that's all. That's all. Acting on a hunt, Captain Katzenberger has the Hollywood burglar Becknell brought to his office for questioning. Bob, they tell me you're in a pretty ugly mood last night. I guess so. You don't usually work alone like that, do you? No, not usually. How come you didn't have your pal with you last night? Oh, uh, he was busy. Opening another safe? Maybe. You haven't seen the Gardner boys lately, have you? No. Not since last night, have you? I ain't saying. You know, you can get along with me much better if you tell me what you know. Well, what do I get out of it? Just what you'd get out of it if you didn't talk. I'm not making bargains with rats like you. Then try and find out what you want to know. That's all right, Bob. I'd just as soon hang that theater job on you as on Gardner. Oh, no, you don't. I was at that Hollywood joint when that happened. Oh, yeah? And just how do you know when it happened? Well, I... Come on, Becknell. Which way did Gardner and his brother go? They've got a shack in Topanga Canyon. Yeah. Better. Who else is in the mob? Eddie Gray. Eddie Gray? You worked with him in Stockton, didn't you? Yeah. Started out in Sacramento and worked down. How many jobs have you pulled off here? About four. Were you in on that stuff or chemical company job? Yeah. What did you do with that safe when you stole it? I don't know. Gardner took it. I see. They say they've got a shack in Topanga Canyon. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll drive out that way. Maybe we'll get a chance to meet the boys. While Captain Berger and his partner drive through the Panga Canyon from Ventura Boulevard, the two gardeners and Eddie Gray are being arrested by traffic officer D.B. Carl as they emerge on the ocean highway. Hey, here comes a car that looks like the boys Captain Berger's looking for. I think I'll stop him. You better be ready to let them have it. They're tough. Yeah, don't worry. I'm keeping my eyes open. Hey, you. Ah, uh, you. Come on. Pull over the curb. Uh, come on. Hey, what's up? Yeah, well, I want to look that car over. What's up? We ain't done nothing. Well, yeah, maybe not. I'll decide about that later. Uh. Look out, Carlson. Yeah, you have to be faster than that, pal. Come on. Get out of there now. Come on. Hmm. Huh. Well, I thought so. Rifles, two sticks of dynamite, and a stick. It's just the boys we're looking for. Come on, pile in. We're going to town. Back at headquarters, identification of the burglars is completed. Their fingerprints tally, and on Gardner's shoes are found new rubber heels matching the prints left at the theater. In Katzenberger's office, he grills the suspects about other jobs mentioned by Becknell. Now, listen to me, you bird. We found that theater safe. And you claim you pulled a stuffer job. I want to know where that safe is. And so you can cop the reward, huh? What would I do with it if I got it? I want that kid to have a new xylophone. That's what I want. Oh, why don't you buy her one? We've got a million fingerprints you left around the theater. The porters identified you and the old lady that lives in the apartment back of the theater saw you load the safe into the package. Now, you know there's a reward offered for that store for safe. You can help out a youngster by, by telling us what it is. Yeah. Well, how do we know you're not kidding us? Why should I kid you? I've got nothing to gain or lose either way. I'm proving this job on you, and you're going to get what's coming to you either way. Now, how about it? Where's that store for safe? And, uh... How's your partner? Mike talking to the kid. Huh? Okay. If you want to. Don't be a dope. Shut up. I know what I'm doing. All right, ten for a couple. I'll split it to her, see. And if she wants to let you in on it, well, let's her see. Captain Berger sent for Madeline and allowed her to talk to the prisoner alone. Now, listen, sister. It's just like I told you, see. We didn't know it was your, uh, your, your telephone, so we split it up. Why did you have to do it? Oh, see, we needed some gold, see. Now, now you listen to me, and you'll be able to have another uh, uh, telephone, a better one you ever had before. How? There's a hundred dollars reward offered for that stuff of chemical safe, ain't they? Yes, but how did you know that? Uh, 
Never mind how I know this. But well, I don't know where the safe is. If you sit up long enough for me to tell you, you will. Well, I don't know. All right. Now, you go on on Santa Monica Boulevard, way out, see? Almost to Santa Monica. You turn left on Regano Boulevard, go about to your wheel gate. And you see a big signboard up there on a vacant lot. You'll find that safe in a hole in the ground back of that signboard. But how can I get it out? Oh, for the love of Mike, don't you try to get it out. Take your copper along with you. He'll take care of the rest. Oh, see, how can I thank you? Oh, <laughs> forget it. Oh, but I won't forget it. You've done an awfully lot for me. Oh, shit. Well, you, you and that, uh, that, uh, what you might call it, that, uh, 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 extra phone, sure done enough for me, too. Have we? How? Oh, never mind. Say. Yes? Uh, when you go out to look for that, uh, safe. Yes? Uh, take that fat foot copy you brought with you. Will, will you? <laughs> okay, I will. <laughs> of two of the feature stories in the new August issue of Calling All Cars News. Now waiting for you at your nearest Rio Grande station. Leslie Howard gives your Calling All Cars News an exclusive story and offers free, personally autographed pictures. Photographs, hot news, and timely chatter about your favorite screen and radio stars. The story of petroleum, the new puzzle feature, Brain the Fuddlers, and the best guide to your motion picture attempts. Be sure and get your copy of this extraordinarily interesting issue. It's free, of course, at all Rio Grande stations. While you're in the station, have the oil in your crankcase checked. Sinclair oils will not break down in the most intense summer heat at the fastest speed. Why then buy oils that are not completely de-waxed, de-jellied, super-refined, and delivered to you in tamper-proof cans? Like Sinclair Opaline, at only 25 cents a quart. Sinclair eyes for safety with Sinclair motor oil. Get police car performance with Rio Grande cracked gasoline at your independent Rio Grande dealers tomorrow. And now, Captain McCaleb. Every criminal connected with this case has met punishment. All of these men might have been valuable citizens had they not been imbued with the idea that crime was a paying proposition. It was for them, it was <coughs> all misery and imprisonment and death. Thank you, Captain McCaleb. Well, from the police calling all cars, attention all cars, cancellation broadcast 193 regarding a burglary. The specs in this case are now in custody. That's all. Rolls and quits. your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande. This 